Hello and welcome back to Scania at IAA. Today we will take a closer look to the technology that will allow us to introduce electrified long haulage transport. And here with me today, I have Magnus McAldner, Head of Electrification Development at Scania R&D. Magnus, how far have we reached in the electrification of heavy transport? Well, first of all, Celia, it's great to be back here at IIA after four years. And during these four years, we have really directed our R&D focus towards electrification. And we have worked very, very hard. And therefore, it's extra fun for me to be able to showcase the regional long haulage product that we have in the stand here. And I think this underlines that electrification is nothing that happens in the long distant future. No, it happens right here and right now. For sure, there will be more development to come, not at least within the batteries. But already today, we can offer a tried and tested solution. And the great thing is that from first day, our customers will get return on investment. For sure, we lack public charging, but that will also come in place soon. Okay, Magnus, but when will our customer receive this truck? And especially, what will they experience? Already from the second half of next year, we will offer a long haulage product capable of driving 80 kilometers an hour with 40 ton for four and a half hour and then recharge in the driver brake. And this opens up a vast possibility to electrify the majority of the transport kilometer in the transport system and by that giving great opportunities to decarbonize transport. To make this happen, we had to develop new charging in the megawatt range, meaning software and hardware. We had to develop new battery system dedicated for heavy duty with the greenest cell from Northvolt, including software. And we also had to develop electrical propulsion with much higher power than we have today. Thank you very much, Magnus. Now we will connect with some experts from the Scania studio and we will go through each and every component to know more about this technology. And here we are in our Scania studio. With me here, I have Jimmy Larson, uh, Engineering Director for Propulsion Development and Scania. I have Lina Ankargiren, Engineering Director for Charging and Thermal um, Management System at Scania. I also have Bo Andrean, Engineering Director for Battery Development at Scania, and uh, Sebastian Roth, Senior Manager, Technology Strategy at Northvolt. Welcome to the studio. And uh, we will start by going through this list of components that Magnus just listed for us to really understand how we will enable long haulage in the near future. So, Alina, we start with you. And uh, we could go through this uh, megawatt charging system first. Can you tell us more? Yes, uh, the megawatt charging system, MCS as we call it, is a key enabler to build uh, a su sufficient infrastructure for uh, uh, heavy vehicles. Uh, it is a set of uh, many standards developed in international forums. And that we have a global standard is really essential uh, in order to have a harmonized solution and really good interoperability for our customers uh, without compromising on uh, safety or uh, uptime. Uh, on the stand today, we see a newly developed uh, ABB megawatt charger, really exciting, together yeah. with the new inlet uh, and the new connector. And uh, the standard, uh, the MCS standard, also states that the inlet needs to be placed in the same position on the vehicle uh, on the um, left front side behind the first axle. Uh, and this is really good, I think. Uh, that's uh, a really good way to set a good infrastructure layout in the charging stations. Absolutely. But uh, exactly what are the benefits of this uh, MCS, as we call it? The benefits is uh, high charging power and what that enables. Uh, so the standard goes up to 3.7 megawatt. We will uh, need to chart with long haulage uh, 0 0.75 megawatt. Uh, and with that, we will be able to fully charge the battery pack uh, during the driver's 45 minute rest. Uh, 
and then you have enough power to continue on the, uh, the rest of the four, four and a half hour journey. So that's really good. You also have the flexibility to charge with low power overnight uh, and have mega charging during your daily operations. You also have the possibility to have a secondary inlet uh, with CCS, for example, if you want to have that, uh, which gives the flexibility uh, with both system, uh, CCS and MCS. Uh, and I think that's also important. You will also have uh, charging services, for instance, scheduled departure that makes sure that the battery is preconditioned and fully charged when you are ready to, um, to leave, uh, which is of course good for range and also the lifetime for the batteries. And instead uh, here, what can we see? Uh, you can see the behind the inlet, you can see the charging inlet box. Uh, and that uh, really connects the charger, the ABB charger, to, uh, to our vehicle. And it uh, closely um, monitors the current, the voltage, uh, and the temperature in the whole charging system. So we can secure that we have a safe and reliable charging session. Absolutely. And then, of course, uh, uh, this is all done because, of course, all this power needs to go in our batteries. Yes. And, there, and here I am talking with you, Bo, because, of course, batteries is one of the very key components of, uh, let's say, this puzzle that we need to put together for long haulage. Can you tell us more about these batteries? Yes, it's, of course, about uh, the capacity of the batteries, the energy capacity, the power and uh, life length, but not last, uh, the safety. The safety we divide normally into active safety and passive safety. And on, this, on the active side, we are utilizing our own developed battery management system to, to take care of all the data that we monitor in the same way actually that you do on the charging side. On, on, the, acti on the passive safety, it's more about the structure, crash, and, this, and the situations where you have an impact in some sort. Mm -hmm. So what, you, what are you really afraid of? What are the hazardous situations? Is overcharging, too deep discharge, overcurrent, and a, some kind of shortcut situation in the system? And when a shortcut situation would occur, we immediately disconnect the pack, the module, or even the cell. And then, of course, for, on the crash side, we need to withstand a possible crash and we, we would like and we must make sure that we don't have an impact into the batteries. So uh, that is uh, on safety. Life length is a lot about to keep the, the, the batteries in a good mode, to keep them happy, we sometimes say, actually. Yes, and then how can we really ensure that we keep our batteries yeah, we keep, happy? <laughs> keep them happy by having control of the temperature. And they must not be too warm and, and they must not be too cold. And the way we control this is also by our own developed management system. So we assure to get, we have the system together with uh, the cab cool system. So the thermal system we are utilizing as a huge and large system, and by that we can ensure that we have the, de the temperature at the right level for the batteries all the time. Mm -hmm. In the vehicle we have outside here, we have uh, six packs of batteries, and uh, we, in these packs we have 1,080 cells. And the range that you can reach is about 400 kilometers. The cells are supplied by Northvolt up in north northern Sweden, and we are in partnership with Northvolt, and, and these cells are then developed together with us for the maximum performance in the complete battery system. And talking about uh, this partnership, of course, we have here with us Sebastian. And Sebastian, I would like to start with maybe a um, simple question, but uh, really important to understand. What is exactly the difference that we have from the batteries that needs to be developed for uh, passenger cars, and instead the one that we have to develop for um, trucks? Mm. Our batteries for heavy duty application in commercial vehicles are way more optimized towards durability. Um, so as, as we compare passenger cars with, with commercial vehicles, commercial vehicles travel much more in their lifetime. Um, 
So we optimized our batteries towards higher load and to actually enable um, uh, longer distance uh, and, and this over the whole lifetime. I understand. But then I also have another question for you. Um, what is the difference between uh, batteries from Norfolk and other batteries? I would say besides uh, good performance to enable uh, a megawatt charging and, and uh, the reliable battery management system, uh, for, all, for us, it's, it's really all about producing the world's greenest batteries. So um, this is done by producing all our batteries with full green energy uh, now and in future. And as we, as we consider roughly to get one kilowatt hour of batteries uh, out, you need roughly uh, 80 kilowatt hours of, of grid power. So doing this with full green energy um, si uh, definitely will have a huge impact. But it don't stop there. So uh, actually to produce a full green battery, you need to consider the full supply chain, which means going really into your supply chain and look on your raw materials to source them in the most sustainable uh, way, which means really looking into reducing constantly your carbon footprint for all your source materials, which, which basically go into um, your battery. But it won't stop there because we're also looking at sustainability. So really achieving the highest standards in terms of, um, for example, uh, uh, ethic, uh, human rights, um, over all our components and, and materials we're integrating here. And, and lastly, not just in our sourcing, so, so now in our uh, upstream process, but also in our downstream process, we design our batteries to, to be recyclable, which means we can actually recycle our batteries after life mm -hmm. and then use these recycled battery materials uh, in our batteries. And therefore, we aim for having uh, roughly 50% of recycled materials out of our batteries again going into our batteries, so reusing them into our batteries. I see, and that's, I believe, really the difference that we seek within this partnership. But then, uh, so we talked so far about the MCS, we talked about the batteries and this partnership that enable us to have these uh, batteries. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy, we miss one key component, uh, which is the powertrain. Can you tell us more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at Scania, we have really a proud heritage when it comes to developing high-end powertrains for Scania vehicles and to our customers. Uh, that has been with the con conventional vehicles, with diesel. Uh, but we actually also have quite a long history of developing electric powertrains, almost 15, 15 years. We started up with buses and hybrids, and we have continued with full electric powertrains. And, and uh, we have, of course, the ambition to continue on that, on that history, to, to enable the, the, the most efficient, the most reliable, the best performing powertrain also in the electric uh, future. But here at the stand uh, at IAA, we really are able to show a lot of these vehicles with these powertrains, right? Yeah, that's correct. We have in the stand a number of ve vehicles with, with our first generation of full electric powertrain. Uh, for instance, the swap body truck, the refuse truck, and also the city bus have the, this first generation that was developed for, uh, by Scania and released in 2019. Uh, and that is uh, developed with, with focus on, on urban applications, actually. So it's up to 28 tonners. Uh, and technology-wise, it, it features a 230 kilowatt uh, electric machine and a two-speed uh, gearbox. And, and in the stand, we also have, of course, this recently uh, launched uh, regional haulage vehicle. Uh, and there we have really managed to put in a really powerful powertrain, electric powertrain. We actually reused the electric machine from our first generation of electric powertrains, and we combined that with our hybrid transmission. So we managed to, to, to get up to 450 kilowatt of continuous power on that one in combination with the six-speed transmission. So that will enable us to, to go above 60 ton vehicles, actually. And, and we have also on that one uh, uh, included a mechanical PTO that will enable a really easy uh, adaptability for our bodybuilders as well. But Jimmy, even if it's uh, a lot, what you just said, mm -hmm. it's not all because we are also able to have a sneak peek on what is coming next, right? Yeah, that's true. We actually uh, have in the stand also a component, our next generation of powertrains. It's uh, actually a platform, a modular platform that we will build on. First uh, out in, in the stand is a centralized system, 
in the future, we will continue with electric axles based on the same technology. Uh, and uh, these ones have been developed with, uh, for, for long haulage in mind and in focus. Uh, so we have really state-of-the-art uh, electric machine with an integrated uh, uh, inverter that will come in a number of performance steps from 200 to 400 kilowatts of continuous power. And that will be possible to combine with a two-speed or four-speed gearbox that enables this really great performance also in long-haul vehicles. But it will be used for all types of applications in the end. So it's, it's a program that we, will, that we will launch here. This one will also come with a mechanical PTO uh, for, for easy adaptability for the bodybuilders. And as, since it is a central drive system, we will combine it with our conventional axles. And that gives a lot of flexibility that we can build on the modular system from Scania. So we can offer the customer a 4x2 or a 6x2 or a 6x4, whatever wheel configuration they desire and need for their for the usage. So that would be a, really a great way to, to make it possible to, to offer the customer what they need. And as I said, into the future, we will have also the electric axle based on the same components, but that's a bit, a bit more into the future then. And uh, with all of these powertrain in mind and also the great customer feedback that we have received for our, for our first generation of powertrains out there at the customer, I can safely say that we will continue to offer really uh, high performing, high end powertrains also into the electric future. And that is certainly something that we are looking forward since we are also about to take our next huge step in electrification of heavy mm -hmm. transport. So I would really like to thank you uh, for being here. I would like to thank you also you for watching. This was um, our last contribution from IAA this, um, this year. And I really hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for watching.